online yoga again and being well rested after a little bit of a break. I will give it another minute or so just to see if anyone else is jumping on. But in the meantime, for those of you who are already on, you can come into child's pose, but I want you to do it a bit differently today. So I don't give you a bit wider. Do you take your arms and straight them through, grabbing your heels if you can, and then placing your forehead on the floor. So it's a bit of a weird child's pose. Yeah. Hopefully you can hear me. If there's any issues, just send me a message on the chat. I do have my laptop in front of me. And if at any time during the class, if you would need help with an adjustment, we have a query, just keep the camera on and I'll see if I can help you. Cool, let's get started. Okay, so for anyone just joining, coming into a weird child's pose today, so you're going to come into child's pose and thread the hands through the legs, trying to grab those heels if you can, forehead to the floor. Just closing the eyes, settling into the body, feeling if you can soften them even more, getting the shoulders maybe down onto the floor, the forehead onto the floor. Maybe even the chest onto the floor. Just allowing the body to relax. Starting to take control of the breath. Deepening the inhale. Deepening the exhale. And while we're doing things a little bit differently today, maybe try do three counts on an inhale, then six counts on an inhale, exhale, four and eight, five and ten. So really making those exhales long and slow as possible. It might get a little bit hard being constricted in this awkward child pose. And you can tap into your ujjayi breath so it's more audible if you'd like to generate some heat and warmth throughout the body. Just restricting the back of the throat. You might find you're starting to warm up quite a bit. So today we're going to be working on into full wheel. And often with back bends, they're quite fearful poses. They bring out a lot of stuff. We're opening up our heart space, opening up the chest, exposing an area that we generally try and hide. So it's opposite movement to what we normally do. If you tend to be round shoulders, you're hiding the heart space, protecting it. And now we're going to open it up, even tapping into the throat chakra and heart chakra. We're going to be doing a lot of work today. If any emotions pop up, just let them out. Don't suppress them. Don't dissect them. Just accept it and carry on. And it's completely normal if you're fearful of going into full wheel. Especially now that there's no one there to support you. It's crucial to make sure you're working to your limit. But the spine is also an incredible muscle, bone, everything about the spine. It will only allow you to bend as deep as your limit. It won't let you go further. So listen to your body. 
allow your spine to guide you in your practice today. If you'd like to set an attention for your class, take one about accepting fear, using fear as a tool, as a challenge. It might not only be for your class, it might be for your week or for the times that we have right now. Just taking it to yourself three times. Still maintaining the breath. The longer exhales. And then when you're finished with your Sankalpa, your intention, release the hand. And just moving really slowly, walking the hand out in front of you, coming into an extended child's pose. You can come into wide-legged one if it suits you. Otherwise, keeping the knees together. Just taking a moment here, drawing the shoulders down towards the ground. Feet towards the heels. Just noticing the change from your arms beneath you to in front of you. And then slowly walking the hands over to the left, going as far as you can without lifting up your sitting bones, but keeping your bum onto your heels, drawing that right hip down, stretching across the right side body, feeling it from the armpit all the way down into the hip. Seeing if you can soften a little bit more. Finding a little bit more space in the leg. Taking a deep breath in. And then exhale slowly. As you inhale, walk your hands back through center. And then moving over to the right hand side. Going as far as you can. Keeping those shoulders down towards the ground. I'm just lifting my head so you can hear me. But otherwise, try to get the forehead onto the floor. Keep drawing that left hip down. You'll notice if you lift up the hip, the stretch disappears almost. So make sure you're drawing it down and closing off that left arm. Stretching across the entire length of the left hand side. Taking a deep breath in through the nose. And exhale nice and slow. And as you inhale, walking the hands back through to center, forehead down to the ground. Lifting up the left hand, rotating the hand, and then trying to reach over to the right side. You can come onto the right cheek, the right side of your face, opening up across the chest, opening a shoulder. Keep trying to get the elbow up towards the sky, hand drawing towards that right thigh. And if you can't reach your thighs, it's okay. It might be anatomy, it might be flexibility. And then slowly release the hands down to the ground. Moving over to the other side, lifting up the right hand, reaching it up, turning the fingers, and then dropping the right hand over to the left hand side. You try to grab the left side, right side, the left side of the face, like the floor, opening up the shoulder, peeling the body open. Keep trying to reach for that thigh. And if you've got that thigh, your inner thigh, try and root, use it as an anchor to open up even more without lifting those fussy bones. And then slowly releasing hands down to the floor. 
forehead down. And then walking the hands underneath the shoulders, lifting up slowly through cat, pushing up through the spine, rounding up. And then exhale, drawing down to cow. And then pushing back up to cat, tucking the tailbone in, chin to chest. Finding that most profound round you can possibly find. And then lowering back down to cow. Reaching the tailbones up towards the sky. And last round, up to cat. Feel as if you're pushing the earth away from you. Deepening the stretch across the shoulders. And then lowering back down to cow, pulling the hands to the knees and the knees to the hands, as if you're trying to pull your chest through the arms. And then slowly coming to neutral. Whew, I'll take myself off. Okay, I forgot I had the mask. Okay, so you're going to get your feet as wide as your mat. Toes are now tight. Grabbing the corners or the edges of your mat wherever you are. You're going to lift up nice and slow into this really, really awkward, bent knees, strange down dog. So while you're here, you're going to try and feel if you want to get your butt higher, but still drawing the heels down towards the ground. It's a very strange down dog, but it's quite fun. So just keep pushing, using the mat to hold you. And then slowly to rock the knees, back down. Bring the toes in, hands in. And then bending the elbows back, keeping them aligned with the body. So try not to splay the elbows, keep them in, lowering all the way, chin and chest, bum stays up to the ground. Then pull through, untuck the toes, walk the hands out in front of you, coming onto the forearm, and placing the hands down into the ground, rooting the fingers down, so spreading them nice and wide, and release the glutes, so try not to tense them. Baby toes are drawing down into the ground. Pull the chest forward, coming into sphinx, lifting the head. You should feel a beautiful stretch across the chest, even into the lower back. Keep making sure you're releasing the glutes, the thighs, so the legs are pretty relaxed. And then release down. One more time. Inhale, draws you up, pulling through. So you're not really moving, but you're feeling that activation. And then just relaxing the arms. Dropping right ear, right shoulder, finding that neck stretch that you need, and tilt the chin up slightly. Just finding where it feels good for you. And then rolling the chin across the chest, left ear, left shoulder. Find the spot. And rolling the head back, right ear, right shoulder. Rolling the chin across the chest. Last time, left ear, left shoulder. And then chin to chest. Slowly lifting the head up. So you're going to place the left hand like parallel to the top of the mat. You can almost just lift the right arm up in front of you so it's easier to sort of, we're doing it an awkward thread the needle and swing. So you're going to extend the left arm all the way across the body and then the right arm coming across as well. So leveling off the shoulders. Your forehead or chin comes over your arm. Keep reaching. The super flexes, your forehead or your chin might touch the floor. 
So just feeling the stretch going from arm to arm, all the way from your shoulders, stretching across. And then slowly releasing, bringing the right arm parallel to the top of the mat, pushing up. If it feels nice, you can stretch that left arm out. And extending now, left arm towards the right, right arm towards the left. It's very awkward. And lowering the head down. Keep stretching and reaching through those fingers, finding this delicious spot. Is it a really good stretch if you've been sitting at your desk all day, working on the computers? And then releasing, bringing the hands back underneath you. Hands underneath the shoulders. And then slowly pushing up into Cobra, Bojangasana. You can keep the elbows bent. If you can't keep your pubic bone on the floor, rather keep the elbows bent than straightening up into the arms. Quite some tension to the lower back. Release the glutes to keep that bum relaxed. And then draw the baby toes down towards the ground. Inhale, lifting up. And then exhale, slowly lowering down as if you're trying to take a bite out of the earth. We're doing two more cobra push-ups. So inhale, slowly lifting up, making sure the head is the last to lift. And then exhale all the way down. One more. Inhale, lifting up. And exhale, lower them down. Forehead to the floor. Walk the hands back in line with your chest, tucking the toes underneath, and pushing up into your tabletop, making sure those hands are underneath the shoulders, knees are underneath the hips. You can move through a couple of organic movements. So if you want to just do cat cow, you can. Otherwise, you can roll the hips. Anyway, you can drop them low. Keep moving nice and fluidly. There's no need to control it. Just waking up the spine. And the good thing is no one's watching you. So move as weirdly as you want. Finding those nice undulations, rolling the spine, getting it nice and fluid so we can get into full wheel. Okay, coming to neutral. We're making sure those hands are now still stacked underneath the shoulders. You want to keep the hips in line, or the knees in line with the hips. I mean, a walker hands out in front of us coming into puppy. So walking nice and slow, lowering the chin and the chest down to the floor or anahata. Making sure you haven't lost your position. So if you're only here, that's okay. If this is too much for you, just come out of it. Find a variation that suits you. We're just here for eight breaths. So taking eight long, deep, delicious breaths. Try and find some softness in this awkward pose. Your body's probably wanting to tell you to get out of it, or your mind at least. Maybe you're feeling claustrophobic. But try and ignore that feeling. Really allowing the chest to melt down towards the ground. Bum drawing up towards the sky. It's a really intense shoulder opener. Just a few more breaths. Using your breath to soften. 
finding the space that needs to be released. Maybe even release your jaw. And then slowly pulling through all the way onto your belly. Might need to shimmy on your mat a bit. And placing the hands underneath the forehead. Rock the hips from side to side. It should feel quite delicious. Just loosening up that lower back. And then finding stillness. We're going to do a half frog variation. We're bringing the right arm parallel to the mat. You're going to bend into the left leg. You can take the left hand and reach back. If you can't reach the foot, it's okay. You can use a strap. Otherwise, um, scarf, belt, anything you can. You want to grab the top of your foot. Square off your shoulders. So you don't want to lift up and look like this. Draw that left shoulder down towards the ground. So you want your shoulders level and you're pulling that foot down towards the ground. The super flexi, maybe you guys can get your foot down to the ground. And just keep pulling it, drawing the shoulder down. You'll feel the stretch right into the shoulder ball and socket. And then slowly release with control, swapping the hands over, left hand now parallel in front of the mat, bending into the right leg, reaching back, grabbing that foot, leveling off the shoulders. So you can see how I turn my shoulders right down. So from this, bringing them down, keeping them level. Quite intense. It's also quite a cool stretch into the quads. Maybe you're feeling it somewhere else. And then slowly releasing that foot. And just lowering down for a moment. You can either find stillness in crocodile or you can wriggle the hips. Just whatever you need right now. And then placing the hands underneath the shoulders, tuck the toes, lift the feet, coming into child's pose. You can either keep your toes tucked or untucked, wide-legged, or normal, just dropping that forehead down to the floor, taking a few deep breaths, finding that long inhale and even longer, slower exhale. Really trying to soften. And then tucking the toes. And just moving back to the center of my mat. And pushing the feet back to the heels, lifting up nice and slow into down dog. If your hamstrings are feeling quite tight, keep the knees bent, draw those shoulders down and away from the body, chest towards the thighs, heels are rooting down towards the ground. Maybe they touch, maybe they don't. Fingers are spread nice and wide. Relax the neck, shake the head, nod the head, release the jaw. Holding your down dog, smile. Inhale, lift the right leg high towards the sky, keeping the toes pointing down towards the ground. And then opening up, stacking the right hip on top of the leg. Making sure you evenly distribute it through the shoulders, so you're not dumping into the left hand side. And then slowly dropping that right foot down towards the bum, opening up even more. And then leveling off the leg, extending it back up. And then stepping the foot all the way through, coming to your low lunge, so lowering the back knee onto the floor. You're going to keep your hands lifting up 
into Anjani Asana. You can either keep your toe tucked or untucked, whatever you want to do. But keep your hands on your knees. So you're really pushing into this right leg. So while you're pushing into the right hip, still draw it back in space and then pull this left hip forward. Keep the tailbone tucked. You're not dumping. Nice. And then coming back up, finding a 90 degree shape of the body and lifting up the left leg, grabbing back. Oh, the side always cramps. Uh, one moment. Stretch out a bit of a cramp. Okay, so what you want to do not, you want to either grab with one hand or both, drawing the heel right up into your bum. And then trying to keep the heel onto your buttock, lowering down. And then what are you doing? It's a very deep quad stretch. So if you can only use one hand, this is okay. And then slowly releasing it. Don't let the foot shoot out of your hand. So rather come back up and then slowly lower the foot down. And then placing the hands onto the floor, tuck the toe under. Inhale, lifting up, coming into your high lunge. Holding it there, keep trying to straighten that back leg, find that side to the front leg. Inhale, exhale, sink a little bit lower. Inhale, drop the back foot 45 degrees, opening up, warrior two. Bending into the front leg, gaze over the right middle finger, hips are facing forward. Inhale, reach forward. Exhale, turn the palm and reverse the warrior. Keeping the front leg bent. Making sure there's very little weight in your left hand so that you're not collapsing. Straighten into the right leg. Inhale and exhale. Inhale, lifting the arms up. And then slowly lowering them all the way down into your triangle, trikonasana. So you want to make sure you're getting rather your hand to your shin than down to the floor. And um, if this helps, I'll show you now what it does. If I take my hand to the floor, watch how my body closes up. So rather than close up your body, open up. Have the hand resting lightly on the shin, drawing that lift up. You're trying to feel it if you're drawing that right red cage up towards the sky. Holding it there. And then bending into the front leg, keeping the arms where they are, getting that hand if you can, all the way to the floor. The right hand is on the inside of the right leg. If this is too much, you can come onto the knee. But wherever you are, making sure you lift it up, opening up the hip. And then dropping the left hand down to the floor, swiveling onto the back foot, and back toe, and then reaching the right arm up towards the sky. Keeping that leg nice and straight and active, finding that push pull, so you're still drawing that right foot back in space, and left foot forward. And then the right hand to the floor, step back to plank, either lowering down knees to chest, or shuffling forward a little bit over the shoulders or over the hands, lowering down through Chaturanga, catching at 90. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Taking a moment in your down dog. Making sure the fingers are spread nice and wide and the tailbone is drawing all the way up towards the sky. Inhale, lift the left leg up, toes pointing towards the floor, keeping the hips level. And then opening up, stacking the left hip on top of the right, leveling off the shoulders, dropping the left foot down towards the bum, opening up even more. Holding it there, keep making sure you're not dropping into the right hip. And then opening up the leg back up high to the sky. Look between the hands. Inhale, step the left foot. 
in the middle, and drop the back knee down to the floor, untuck or tuck the toe, whatever you did on the other side, inhale, lifting up to Anjana with your hands on your knees, pushing into the left hip, while you're pushing down into the left hip, drawing it back into space. And drawing, pulling the right hip forward, keeping the tailbone tucked. So if you find you untucking the tailbone, so you don't want to look like this, come up, tuck the tailbone under, and then lower down. Only going as deep as you need. And then coming back up. Lifting up the right leg. See how I don't cramp on this side. Bringing the right foot towards the right bum cheek. Holding it there. Keeping the back nice and straight. And then slowly begin to lower down. You want to make sure you're not on the kneecap, that you're slightly above it. So while I'm holding here, you want to almost be over here, so where the muscle starts. It'll take a lot of pressure and pain off the knee. And then slowly releasing that foot down. Bring the hands to the floor, tucking the toe under. Inhale, lifting all the way up into your high lunge. Holding it there, keeping the back leg straight, tailbone tucked, sinking into that right left foot. Inhale, exhale, sink. Inhale, drop the back foot down to 45 degrees. Open up, warrior two. Bending into the right leg, left leg. Gaze is over the left middle finger. Shoulders are down away from the ears. Holding it there, bending even more. Dropping a little bit lower. And then inhale, slowly begin to straighten the leg. I feel like I missed a reverse warrior. Did I do a reverse warrior? I did. Sorry about that. Reverse your warrior. Keep the leg bent. And then slowly start to straighten into that left leg. Holding it there for a moment. And then inhale, drawing you up. Exhale, slowly begin to hinge the hips. Reaching forward, reaching forward. And then dropping that hand down to the shin. Right hand up towards the sky, opening up the hips. Again, making sure you're not collapsing into the body. So you're keeping yourself nice and open. If you can, gaze up at your right thumb. Feel as if someone's really pulling you from here. It shouldn't be a relaxing, comfy pose. And then slowly bending into the front leg. Hands to the floor, reaching that right arm down, sinking into the hips a little bit more, really trying to open up. Inhale and exhale. Put a block under your hand. And placing the right hand down to the floor, swiveling onto the toes, reaching the left hand up towards the sky. Holding it there. And then left hand down to the floor. Step back to plank. Try not to drag your foot. Lowering down either knees to chest. I'll do knees to chest this time. Otherwise, moving through your vinyasa of your choice. And we'll meet in down dog. So for those of you, knees drop down. Chin chest, keeping the elbows in. Bum up. Release. Baby cobra. Exhale down. Inhale, tuck toes, seat back to heels, and then lifting up as you exhale into down dog. Nicely done. Holding your down dog, just catching your breath for a moment. Find the rest. Taking a deep breath in through the nose. And then exhale, sign it out. Inhale, lift the right leg up high towards the sky. Open up the hip, drop the heel towards the bum, holding it there, making sure you're not dumping into the left shoulder. 
and then making a big circle with that right knee, bring it all the way, stepping it on the outside of the right hand, holding a lizard for a moment, and then stepping back to plank, rolling back up to down dog. Inhale, lift the left leg up, open up the hips, stack the left hip on top of the right, dropping the heel towards the bum, leveling off the shoulders, and then drawing a big circle all the way around, stepping on the outside of the left hand, and then weight is into the left hand, bring that right foot, stepping it down, dropping the bum, coming into your malasana squat. Making sure your feet are as wide as the mat, so rather get your heels flat on the ground and be up on your toes, keeping the, short, keeping the back nice and straight as well. You don't want to be dumping in or rolling or rounding. Using the knees or the elbows to open up the legs. So you can have an option here. You can either stay in Malasana, you can do five toeless. <laughs> uh, Anna. My friend's doing yoga behind me and she's uh, clicking and moaning. And if you're doing one more, holding it up on the toes, keeping the back straight. If you want to challenge your balance, lift the arms up. That's just for fun. Bringing the hands back in, lowering all the way back down. We're almost finished with our Malasana torture. Right, left hand out to the side, right arm up towards the sky, opening up, looking up towards the right thumb. Inhale and exhale. Inhale draws you back to center. And then going over to the other side, right hand out, left hand up. Smile, looking up at the sun. Inhale and exhale, coming back to center. Placing the hands on the floor and moving incredibly slowly, lifting the bum all the way up. It should feel absolutely delightful down the legs. Coming into your wide legged Uttanasana. You can come into a ragdoll if you want, grabbing opposite elbows. Rock gently from side to side. Otherwise, just finding stillness, allowing the head and the neck to hang heavy. Then placing the left hand in the middle of your mat. So you really want it right underneath your chest, bending into the left leg, opening up, reaching the right arm up towards the sky. Gaze if you can, gaze at your thumb. Really trying to open up the chest. Inhale and exhale. Inhale, drawing the hand down, swapping over. Right hand in the middle, right leg bends, left arm peels up and open. Bending into the right leg, reaching the left arm up towards the sky. Inhale and exhale. Inhale. The left hand comes down nice and slow, holding it there for a moment. Heel toe the feet. About hip width distance apart. So if you can, two foot between the finger uh, to, between the feet. Rooting the hand down into the ground. You can jump back to plank or step back, however you would like to get there. Jumping back, holding a plank. Shifting the weight over the harris. We're going to bend the elbows and then slowly lower down for five, four, three, two, and one. All the way down. Well done. Placing the hands underneath the forehead. We're just going to rock these hips in crocodile. Rock from side to side before we move into our half bow and full bow. Just taking these ones quite easy. We're going to, I'm just thinking which side's better to do first. Okay, right arm out in front of you, bending into the left leg, reaching back with the left hand. So you can either grab the inside or you can grab the ankle. 
it is a bit of a different stretch if you grab the outside of your foot, but just grabbing wherever is comfortable, keeping the left, right foot, oh, my left and right, on the floor. Inhale, exhale, release the head down to the floor. And then as you inhale, lift the legs, lift the arms, reach forward, lifting up, kicking that foot into the hand, holding for five, four, three, two, and one, slowly lower down, releasing the foot, rock the hips. It's one of my favorite things to do after these bows. I just love rocking my hips like this. Seems silly. And then left arm out, bending into the right leg, reaching back, grabbing wherever you grab on the other side. So if you grab the outside, grab the outside. Try to keep the knees as close together as you can. Inhale. Exhale, forward to the floor. And then as you inhale, we're going to lift up, reach up. Point the foot, lift up a little bit more. Four, five, four, three, two, and one. Lowering down, hands underneath the forehead. Finding stillness or rocking the hips. We're going to be going into full bow. Again, you don't have to do this one. If you can, it's always good to give it a bash. So you're going to bend the knees. Try to keep the knees together. Try not to let them splay out. So keep them in. Reaching back. Okay. So you can, I don't know if you guys can see, but my knees are already splayed. So I'm just going to bring them back together. Inhale. Exhale forward to the floor. And then inhale, lifting up, reaching up. Feel as if you're kicking into your hands as hard as you can. Lifting up a little bit more. A little bit more. If you rock, it's okay. Four, five. Four, three, two, and one. Slowly lowering all the way down to the floor. Release the feet. Now really rock those hips. Oh. And we're almost at the best part. Okay, rolling over onto your back. So if you don't want to go up into full wheel, you don't have to. But we're gonna do a couple, we're gonna do one or two bridges, then we'll go up into wheel. Should have time for two bridges and a wheel, or one bridge and a wheel. See what you guys want to do. So coming into bridge, bring those heels right up as close as you possibly can towards the bum. You want to be able to tickle the heels with the fingertips. What you can do to make sure that you are squeezing the knees rather than the glutes is if you do have a block, place it between your legs. Inhale, tuck the tailbone under, and then slowly begin to peel each vertebrae off the mat. Rolling up, lifting up. It's a little bit too narrow. You want your feet about hip width distance apart. And then you shimmy the shoulders underneath your back, interlace the hands if you can. Pushing down through the feet. Relaxing the glutes and the thighs as best you can. So you're pushing up and down through your feet at the same time. So it's that root to rise feeling. Passing up the chest. Holding it there. And then releasing the hands. And then slowly lowering down. Upper back. Middle back. Lower back. And extending the sacrum down onto the floor. So for those of you who would like to do full wheel, I'll cue it in now, everyone else, you can move through another bridge. If you really want to, you could do a restorative bridge, so placing a block or something underneath your back and just relaxing there. Otherwise, for those moving into bridge, I mean full wheel, bring the feet again right up close to the bottom, tickle them with your fingertips. Lifting up the hands, placing the fingers towards the shoulders to make sure I'm not standing on my hair. 
and then tuck the tailbone under as if you're lifting up through a bridge and placing the crown of your head onto the floor. Okay, plug the shoulders back in space and then slowly begin to lift. Oopsie, don't move your hands like me. Keep drawing the knees together so you want those knees hip width distance apart. The feet are facing forward, not splaying out. You want to make a U shape with the body, not a V shape. And then if this is a bit too much, come out slowly, bring the chin towards the chest, lowering the head down, and then coming out as you would bridge. Whew. It is very intense on the legs. If you don't want to do another wheel, you can lift the feet up. If you've got a wall nearby, you can go into Lipa Rita Karani. I'll give you guys another minute to play with your bridge or your wheel. Otherwise, just lifting up. If you have a block or a cushion, you can place it underneath your sacrum. Noticing what thoughts came into your head when you're trying, when you were up at wheel. Slowly releasing the feet down towards the floor. Lifting up. Drawing the knees in towards the chest. Pulling them in, wind release, flexing the feet, hands are below the knees, shoulders are drawing down towards the ground. You want to feel as if you're pulling the knees into the armpits. Sacrum is drawing down towards the floor. And then taking your hands through the knees, grabbing the outside of your feet, lifting them up, coming into a happy baby. And rock from side to side if you want to, otherwise just finding stillness. Making sure you're drawing that sacrum still down onto the ground, so the spine is flat should feel quite nice. And then releasing the feet, grabbing behind the side, slowly lengthening, rocking up and down the length of the mat, coming to sit. And we can change direction. If you'd like to, if you need a little bit more um, space with your Pashimottanasana, you can place it block or cushion or something underneath your bum, especially for those, if you just shy of your toes, inhale reaching up and then exhale folding forward, reaching for those toes. It will just give you a little bit extra room to strengthen and lengthen, keeping that back nice and flat so you don't want to be rounding into the spine. Inhale and exhale, soften a little bit more. Only going as deep as you can or as deep as you need. And close the eyes. We're just here for about a minute. Slowing the breath down. It's always good after an extreme back bend to count the movement with an extreme forward fold. Now just allowing gravity to take you lower, dropping your body down more towards the ground. Notice where you're holding on to any tension. Let's see if you can relax a little bit more. Release the jaw if you're clenching it. And then slowly dropping the hands down towards the floor. And then rolling up nice and slow. If you have something underneath your bum, just removing it. Bending into the right leg, bringing it right up in towards the chest. And then stepping it over the left. Right hand goes to the base of the spine. Left hand up towards the sky. Inhale. And then exhale, hooking the elbow over the knee. If you want to, you can keep your hand here. Otherwise, you can drop the hand towards the side. 
towards the feet rather. Inhale to find them. And exhale to twist a little bit deeper. Keep breathing in and out through your nose. Enjoying the twist. Inhale slowly, begin to unwind. Count to the stretch. Taking the hands onto the left hand side, pushing the body away from the hands, the hands away from the body. And then release. Extending the right leg up, bending the left leg in, hugging it right up into the chest. Keeping the back straight. And then stepping the left foot over the right leg. Left hand to the base of the spine. Inhale, reaching the right arm up towards the sky. And then exhale, hook. Inhale, find length. And exhale, twisting a little deeper. You drop your hand on the other side. You may do so on this side. If you need to come up onto your fingertips, you can. Just whatever variation works for you. Twisting as deep as you need. Listening to the body. And then as you inhale, slowly begin to unwind, countering the stretch. Over to the right hand side, hands away from the body, body away from the head, push. And relax. Extending both legs out now, I'll join the left leg out to the right. If you have a wall, you can come up into Vika Rita Karani. Otherwise, just legs up the wall or legs up in the sky. So hands up in front of you for those who don't have a wall. You're going to lower all the way down to the floor. If you have something you'd like to place it underneath your buttocks or underneath your sacrum, you can. Otherwise, lifting the legs up, closing into the eyes. If you do have a wall, you want to get your bum quite close. You don't want to wet the canvas. So you want to really come up onto the sides of the wall and then lift the legs up. So your bum is literally pushing onto the wall. You can relax the feet. Replace the hands wherever it feels good. Even if you'd like, you can place the hands on your belly. And noticing the breath, returning back to it. Deep inhale and even deeper exhale. Noticing the rise and the fall of your belly. Allowing the heart rate to slow right down. Letting all that lactic acid drain down. Reversing the blood flow. Allowing any thoughts to just float on by. And then slowly lowering the feet down towards the chest. If you're on the wall, you can push away a little bit. Otherwise, if you can, Keep the feet on the wall, getting the knees in towards the chest, giving yourself a hug. And then slowly unwinding wherever you are, coming back onto your mat, getting ready for your Shavasana. If you'd like to grab a jersey, just grab a jersey or a blanket. Coming into whichever version feels good for you. I always find after back bending, I quite enjoy by the foot of Anasmatana. You bring your feet into butterfly legs. Palms are facing up, arms are at a 45 degree angle. Otherwise, constructive rest, knees up, or typical Shavasana, feet as wide as a mat. Just going where you feel comfortable. Heading out any last moments, wiggles and niggles. If you need to do any other final movement, you may do so now. 
So as you're really comfortable, but it's still getting comfortable. Allowing the top eyelids to drop down towards the bottom. Becoming heavy. Letting go of that controlled breath. Allowing the body to completely relax. Melt down. Taking these last final moments for yourself. Just in grateful stability to move your body. For having a spine that allows you to make these wonderful shapes. We forget how intelligent the spine is. Heart only allows us to go to your, cap your maximum capacity. It's important to keep your spine healthy and strong. Lying quietly for a moment, scanning through the body. Starting the feet, working your way up. If you don't feel like doing a body scan, simply just lying on the ground, allowing the thoughts to pass them by, just simply being, being present in this moment. If you'd like to stay in Shavasana for longer, you can. It's totally up to you. Otherwise, slowly begin to deepen your breath. Allowing the belly to rise and fall. Bring that type of sensation of touch back into the body. Gently rubbing the fingers across the thumb. Wiggling into the toes. And if you're in Balakanasana or constructive rest, just slowly moving out of it. Hugging the knees and towards the chest. Either giving yourself a hug, lifting the head, neck and shoulders, squeezing yourself into a little ball. Otherwise, just simply rocking from side to side. And then rolling over. Onto whichever side suits you, coming into a seated position, hand underneath the head, keeping the eyes closed, just bringing your attention back to some culture, your affirmation or your intention that you set the beginning of the car. Stay you to yourself three more times. And if it's something you need every day, just keep at it, keep working with this one. This and Copa is often something you should be working with for anywhere from three to six months. But you can also have one just for fun. And when you're ready, slowly begin to push up, coming into comfy seated position. Wherever you are, switch the cross of your legs, keeping the eyes closed, 
Back is nice and straight, the shoulders are away from the ears, elbows are drawing in towards the side. Hands are just wherever is comfortable. Palms up to receive energy, down to feel grounded. So just simply in relax. Taking a deep breath into your nose. And exhale, side up to the mouth. Bringing the hands to heart center, thumbs to the sternum. Dropping chin towards the chest. It's been an absolute pleasure guiding you this evening. Hope you have a wonderful week and weekend or the rest of the week. It's good to be back. I hope you have a wonderful time. And I'll see you again in the mass soon. The life in me sees the life in each one of you. Namaste. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Nicola.